again. Hey Rose, how are you? Good. Um, you're recording this part of it. Did you want to? No. Are officially recording this meeting. Present is Barry Goldman. Present. Ruth Townsend. Yep. Dave Billings. Yes. And Ford Spaulding. With that, the first order of business to approve the minutes. Now, I think I have two minutes to go. So February 15 is the first one. Accept a motion to approve. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, I'll do the roll call. Barry Goldman. Aye. Ruth Townsend. Yeah. Dave Billings. Yes. Ford Spaulding. The next one is the minutes of March 9. I'll accept a motion to approve. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, Barry Goldman. Yes. Ruth Townsend. Yes. Dave Billings. Yes. Ford Spaulding. Um, we have no invoices. So we'll do a schedule update and I'm gonna turn the schedule update and design examples over to John. All right, hi Ford. Are you frozen, John? No. No, no. no. <laughs> you weren't moving. That got me nervous. Uh, you know, I've had a hard day today on this Zooming so. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I, I, uh, I had trouble logging in, of course, so I... I just joined with my computer for it so I can share the screen. All right, there's our phone. You want me to go to another agenda item while you're doing that? Oh, I, I'm set. Do you want me to? Are you ready to start for it? Or, or... Oh, yeah, the floor is yours. Oh, <laughs> did I miss the calling the meeting to order? Sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll start. We. back up and get to full screen. Um, so I'll start off with just a bit about schedule, but I think Deborah's going to do the heavy lifting tonight. Um, tonight, our focus is on design. Uh, we've put that off for a while. So now it's finally time to talk about design. Uh, so we'll start with some precedent buildings and materials ideas, a little bit of Dover context, and then we'll show you our very initial concepts for uh, we have two concepts for both options, for each option. So um, 
just briefly on schedule, we, uh, you know, last, last week we uh, met uh, and reviewed the mechanical systems. Uh, this, today we're gonna review architecture. And then uh, on Monday, our landscape architect has been working. We had a meeting this week, an internal meeting. So we'll have um, updated uh, site plan options based on the discussions with you all and with the planning board. So we'll have that for next Monday. And then on the 29th of March, we intend to come back to the topic of architecture and uh, we'll have updates based on feedback from tonight. Um, and just, uh, I think we've listed most of these meetings. What, the one additional one is we met with our kitchen designer this week, including today. And he talked with uh, Janet at COA and, and, and Mark uh, of Parks and Rec just to make sure that we really understand uh, the needs of those two departments and we're going to do our best to incorporate that into our into our space um, so that's kind of where we are with our meetings uh, both for the building committee and internal uh, the goal is a cost estimating set uh, to be released on april 9th um, we take the balance of april to estimate that we can make tweaks to the design and work on that during the same time um, and then we'll be ready to really uh, explain and promote this project in May for the lead up to, uh, to a June town meeting vote. Any questions about that? Okay. With that, then I'm gonna let Deborah take over. Okay, <laughs> great. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see you all. Uh, so we're uh, going to go through, first of all, sort of our inspiration, some precedents, give you an idea of um, sort of the basis of our design thinking, and then go to what I'm going to call, um, it's like our cardboard model um, alternatives for the design. And you'll see when we get to them, um, I think they're better than cardboard models because cardboard models, I, I, have you all seen architectural cardboard models? They're sort of crude. They're very general. Um, and you set them up and see, you know, how they look in the context and stuff. You have cardboard models of the context, like townhouse and, and some of the buildings on Whiting Road. Um, so the, the, I think the advantage we have here, having built these in Revit and they're three-dimensional and they're physical models, is we can actually look at them at eye level. And so that's what we're going to be doing tonight with you, showing you a few different views of a number of alternatives um, uh, uh, for the two um, strategies, the renovation strategy and the new construction strategy. Um, so to start off, just to um, capture you know, some of the, um, and also this, this hopefully is a conversation, it's not a presentation, you know, because really what we're looking for from you all is some feedback on sort of what you're seeing, what you, you know, what you, what are you not seeing, you know, what are you thinking about, what do you like, you know, what um, doesn't make, you feel like doesn't make sense here or whatever so you know i think that um that's what we're hoping to have so please um interrupt me raise your hand you know send a flare up yeah, and uh, we'll stop for, mm -hmm. for now let's let's hold a, a discussion on this to the building committee um and consultants if we could yep yeah that makes sense so um maybe john maybe you can keep an eye out for for people um, raising their hands. So you'll yeah. recognize all of these buildings. Um, they're in, um, in the town center uh, and they you know, contribute to you know, the, the environment of the, of the town center. And this, of course, the, the Carl School, one of our strategies is to keep um, that uh, section of the building. So of course, two alternatives we look at. Um, you see townhouse, uh, which is across the street um, and the you know, some of the other buildings around um, the town center. I think the library is um, the building that has a program that's most similar to a community, to the community center. It's, you know, it's a, it's a resource. It's a community resource. It's not like where you do business, town business, you know, so, so, and, and it's a really exquisite building. And um, you'll see there's a little bit of inspiration drawn from that with um, some of the alternatives. Um, there's a lot of brick in this context. Um, this, that is something that we are um, 
uh, all you'll see all of the schemes we're thinking of um, including brick, not necessarily the whole the whole building, the whole complex, um, but es essentially you know the Springdale side at least you know is um, would be using brick, um, maybe brick in a slightly different way than is used uh, in the existing building. It's always pretty impossible <laughs> to match match brick. You know, the, and the, the construction of the brick from 100 years ago, you know, the mortar joints are narrower and never quite looks the same. So we don't want a near miss kind of building. We'll, you, you know, so as we select the brick, uh, we will develop something that is um, compatible with it is um, maybe using the same, you know, we use the same color, but we mix in, um, you know, a darker brick in a pattern that makes it distinct, but yet um, it really feels like it, it, it is married to um, this, the brick that we find in this context. Um, so um, now we look at material oats. Um, next slide is actually looking at, it's um, yep. looking at how to, how to build uh, some inspiration uh, of buildings uh, that are additions to uh, existing uh, brick buildings, historic brick buildings. Um, and we've got three examples here. There are, there are lots of examples, um, but these are, are three that feel somewhat relevant. It's slightly different scale. Some of these are slightly different scale, but seem somewhat relevant. The first one is at Harvard. It's in, in uh, Harvard Yard um, near the anthropology department. In fact, this is the anthropology, the addition is the anthropology Library, right, John? John went to yeah. Well, that was I his program when he was at Harvard. <laughs> so, you're familiar <laughs> familiar with this building, um, but it is uh, so it, it's a rebuilding of the library. I think a lot of the structure was maintained, so the general footprint is there. But it, it is a building that is deferential to the exquisite, um, uh, you know, uh, original building you see on the on the left of that image, that top left image. Uh, and, and it's something that it's a building that's a little bit deferential. It doesn't, it doesn't have the symmetry. It's more like, um, you know, bookend to the existing building. Um, that's a strategy also that we find in the Easton, um, Pennsylvania project, um, where the building is a very similar brick, um, but it is, um, distinct in, in scale and in, um, expression. And then a project, uh, in Maine, uh, at Colby College, which, feels like a, actually a really nice, nicely scaled building in relationship, you know, a nice reference for us because of the scale of the building. Um, and this one is, um, so if we go to the lower two images, those are the Colby College. The image on the right, uh, on the far right of that image is the original building. It's a, a classic, um, uh, well-proportioned uh, brick building. And the addition to it is terracotta. And uh, which is a slight, it's still a masonry material. It's a brick is a, is a, a clay material, I mean. Brick is a clay material. Terracotta is also a clay material. It's just, it comes in larger panels. Uh, it's erected in a different way. I mean, it's a really beautiful complement really to, um, to a brick building. And uh, there you can see that it's both used as wall material. And then if we look at the image on the right, it's also used as a sunscreen. Um, at a more glassy area of the addition. So Deborah, so this, this is, is a front and back uh, of the uh, Colby building? Right. It is, yeah. Yep. It is, yeah. And so um, so this is, and Terry's not here. Terry's asked me a couple of times is how, how one builds onto an existing building. And the section of, of school that we're leaving is a symmetrical building. You know, the entry's not there anymore, but it, it still has that kind of, uh, you know, the roof reinforces that, but the hip roof. Um, so we feel like that our additions would be um, somewhat deferential to to that um, historic building. So it's, and uh, so the next series of slides are are different uh, materials that we would look at, um, with d treatments of brick uh, that we would consider if, uh, as inspiration and and uh, materials that we feel are. Uh, would be compatible and appropriate in this um, in this setting. So first, um, we see different ways of, of texturing the brick just by you know the way it's um, the wall is constructed, where you get shadows. So the even though 
you might have the same color brick. Um, it appears different because you, you get so much shadowing from um, the texture of the brick. Um, we see the anthropology building again on the right side. That's the entry that sits between the historic building and, and um, the, the library addition. So, so I'll just add that that texture is a contemporary way of providing some interest without mimicking the, the traditional brickwork, which also has mm -hmm. texture, but in a very traditional standard. Right. Yeah, the traditional, the tr traditional brick, um, a lot of the detailing that we see in it is actually a, a part of the way the wall is built. You, know, you get the little short ends, the header brick, that's the, you know, it ties the wall together. Our, you know, we don't build uh, brick walls that way anymore. But, um, you know, it is, but it does create a beautiful texture on a, on a, uh, a brick wall. And, and it's that, that kind of effect that um, we would want to replicate, not replicate, but to um, uh, provide inspiration for the texture of the brick wall. And so some other um, examples. Um, so now we're looking at uh, materials that we could work with, uh, with the, with brick. And here's some examples, um, two examples of introducing metal with it. And this, both of these cases, um, they're copper. And then we have on the next slide. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here we have, um, these are wood products uh, uh, that are counterpoints to the, uh, to the brick. You know, they have a color, you know, that um, it, it is, they're in the same color what do you call it? Um, color tone, you know. They and uh, they, but they have a completely different texture. And they're they're both materials that have a warmth to them, which we think is really interesting and appropriate for this um, for the Dover site. Um, but they but they're distinct, and so they start to break down the scale of the of the wall. And the yeah okay oh, another sorry. oh that's okay. So another oh so we have. Um, alternate masonry. So we have some stone in here. So the uh, image yes. on the right, we have slate um, as a wall finish, which is um, at the, you know, sort of a, above the entry there. Um, the image in the middle is New York City. That is a, um, it is a panelized brick. So that is a brick that's actually um, embedded in a concrete panel and assembled, it's unitized and assembled I mean, it has this really beautiful depth to it. I mean, you look at the overall building and, and it's quite, um, it gives it, even though those panels are all identical, the way they're arrayed on the building gives it a really beautiful texture. And this is a strategy that was um, in, uh, deployed in this situation because of the building that it's next to, um, which is a beautiful, you know, beautifully detailed, but, you know, in, in a very different way. So next. Next slide. Oh, any comments on anything that, that we're showing at this point? Should I just keep running through them? Um, here we have, um, oh, we're calling alternate wood. A couple of these examples are, um, or one of these examples is actually a wood on the one on the left is a thermally modified wood. It's basically a baked wood that um, is very environmentally um, uh, sound in that it has no chemicals, it needs no sealers, it is um, like petrified wood, you know, it's very, um, sta it's a very stable wood, it doesn't change dimensionally, um, you can get it in, in trees, you know, um, in this country, you know, so, it, you know, use in trees that, that are readily available uh, and planted sustainably. So it's an interesting um, uh, option for either cladding, it can also be used as as floor material, floor material or decking um, that doesn't need any kind of sealer. Um, there's a, a, a similar uh, kind of product that John has used, um, which we see on the upper right, which is a PVDF. Um, so it's a film, it's a wood with a film on the outside to create right. a more stable product um, that's used uh, as Looks like um, John, it's used as both the cladding and as the um, sun yeah. shading. Right. In, the building. in that case, it is. Yeah. And then on the bottom, we are, we have a um, it's actually a cementitious product, um, a high density fiber cement, 
which um, is sort of evo in this case evokes um, the feeling of wood. You can get this in colors that are very warm, you know, in the oranges, the beige, the oranges, um, terracotta color, um, but it's a very stable product um, and, um, and a very, um, you know, easy product to use uh, and a product is very durable, fireproof also. Um, next slide. Um, so here we have a couple of examples of stone um, that are used as a uh, rain screen system. So um, I'm trying to remember, that's Williams College on the left. And then um, the Alston Library on the right where stone is used in two different ways. You see it used as the wall uh, and you see it used as, as a cladding material, like a, almost like a tile um, on the upper section there. And stone seems like, you know, it seems like it could be interesting to incorporate some stone, whether it's into the, you know, onto the building itself or whether it's used to create patios or retaining, you know, small retaining walls or something because it is such a, a um, ubiquitous um, uh, material you find along the streets, um, in, along the roadways in, in Dover. And next um, is terracotta. Uh, which is, which you saw that first example here, we have a close up um, with the historic building in the foreground and the terracotta building um, a little further down. And this is the left image, terracotta panels. And then um, embedded terracotta, I included this if anyone has rented a car at Logan Airport. Um, this is a project that we did at Logan Airport. Well, I was gonna say if yeah, people rented a car at Logan Airport at work at Logan Airport, but I see Luciana is not here right now, so um, she would have gotten that that um, comment. But so this is um, this is another example. And this is uh, a part of the. This is built on an edge of the airport, which is right opposite a historic um, East Boston neighborhood, where brick is a predominant material. And um, it was well received. You know the verticality of the panels. It's almost like um, you know, sort of the, the uh, row houses that you see in, in parts of the neighborhood proportion in terms of proportions. Um, so I think that is the end of our yeah. material section and curious if you have any reactions to what we're showing or um, if you, you know, have any other thoughts of products that we could look at and materials that we could look at. Deborah, what you're, you're asking the committee is some reactions of what they've just seen, correct? Exactly. Yeah. All right, speak up, people. <laughs> I think I've used almost all of them over the years. Mm -hmm. um, looks like your palette's kind of uh, is warm. You're looking for the brick tones, the earth tones, which <laughs> I think is very appropriate. Um, they, I, they've all, I think, worked quite well. I've, some of them, you know, met some of the metal panels and, and Swiss pearls have long lead items and then get pretty pricey, but. Um, you know, I, I think they, they can all work very nicely. They're all very durable. And that is, that's a priority mm -hmm. on a public building. So that is definitely. And, and you can scale them nicely. That's we're looking you, at it. You can, you know, they tend to be mm -hmm. smaller units and then you can build them into a nice scale of a building. Mm -hmm. Have you used any of the wood products that we, we listed? Um, not for, not for sightings. I, I did. Um, uh, I've been using ePay and like uh, mm -hmm. deck structures and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. but not as a sighting. It's very hard to work with. Yes. Yeah, because it's so hard to. Yeah, yeah it's very it's, dense. It's hard to nail into. So ePay is a, a very dense um, wood that is comes from rainforests. Um, the thermally modified wood that I showed you, which was a poplar. Um, the, the yep. one specifically was a poplar. Um, that is um, sort of an alternative uh, to ePay Woods, but it is uh, comes from here. You know, it's yep. it's um, sustainably harvested. It is modified in a way so it has the properties. It may also be a little hard hard to nail, but that's part of the <laughs> you know that's that's part of the properties that make it um, a very durable material. So we, that's, that was sort of, um, we discovered it trying to find an alternative to ePay. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, are, for the, I was just thinking woods, are you thinking anything for the structure of the building? For woods, either CLTs or, or some mass timber? 
we are uh, thinking of some for uh, the renovation scheme. And okay. when we get to it, you'll, you'll see why. It's because, well, I can tell you why. Oh, we'll show you why. Okay. <laughs> but yes, we are considering considering that. Um, All right, you were just talking about exteriorized yeah. materials. I just thought of it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, but we oh, were thinking great. of it. We actually talked to our structural engineer about it, you know, whether, you know, we, you know, use structural frame or, uh, or use, you know, use wood as decking. And he suggested, I mean, we have, a, we're going to be building a steel building. And he suggested we're just consistent with, the, um, you know, the use of, you know, just using steel for the, the yeah. frame, structural frame. Okay. But for decking, um, we could expose the decking and uh, have wood decking or something like that. So that is something that we're considering for the community room and a few of the alternatives we're gonna show you. So. Excellent. Anybody else, Barry? Or? Well, I like the uh, use of uh, brick. It's a warm material. It picks up the characteristics of the other two principal buildings in town, the um, townhouse and the library. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, the emphasis on brick, I think, is, is very important. Um, it would be nice to offset it with uh, some warm wood type products, as you mentioned. Um, uh, other than that, uh, I think we're going in the right direction. Uh, the, the, there's such a hodgepodge of, of uh, types in that area. That yes. <laughs> Hopefully the building will begin to tie um, the architecture of the, of the uh, area in, in together. So we have something that you can really call a, a style. Maybe you or may I ask a question? Yeah. Um, Deborah and John, have you uh, looked at this in terms of panelization and building off site and bringing on and as part of a schedule or a cost? I don't know that's, if it would be some, a couple of the products that we showed are actually panelized products. Um, the terracotta, one of the, the terracotta was that came in huge panels. <laughs> you, know, you need a crane bigger than mm -hmm. we probably want to use um, in this, you know, in this situation, but um, there was um, a brick, uh, the brick in New York City. Yeah, um, that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, a really beautiful. Yeah, and that that's all embedded in uh, con precast concrete uh, panels, so it is a very quick erection for that one. Is that yeah, something so that, that you might consider for this project? Def or? That's definitely something we could consider, Teresa. You, when you see the, the the designs themselves, they are often sectioned, so mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't be a stretch design wise to to look at that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was sort of thinking about, you know, honoring the center of town, which is what the brick does, because that takes in, you know, the, the traditional buildings that are in the town that have been there for a while. But as you go into the new construction, um, you might want to have a balance of, you know, wood or some other material that, that can, can look like mm -hmm. wood, but maybe more durable, I don't know. And then, you know, there's stone walls that are adjacent to that building that are go down the street. And and um, I've seen where the bottom of the building, let's say the bottom mm -hmm. three feet, four feet, is sort of looks, it's not a stone wall, but it sort of looks like stone um, that might fit in with the stone wall that is already next door to it. So that would sort of, as you look at the building, you have the brick that transfers into wood or something like that. And then you start seeing that wall at the bottom that can go around. That's the degree of my uh, figuring things out. But I, I just think I think that honors the town uh, and the town heritage and history. And then as you go around towards the back, I like the glass for the like the community center. But I think now we're in a neighborhood, and we uh, and, and and I think more of a of a, a wood sort of siding. I think of the hospital over in Needham, uh, Beth Israel Hospital, the side that is adjacent uh, looking at the neighborhood fits in very well with the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And the side that faces the street fits in very well with the current look of Beth Israel Hospital. Mm -hmm. 
So, mm -hmm. you know, they honor the neighborhood as well as, as the current building. That's sort of what I'm thinking about. Yeah, that's sort of what we're thinking about too. <laughs> Where it, the, you know, the brick, the face towards Springdale, along Springdale, would really make sense being primarily brick. Um, and then as it come, we come around to the, what we call the backyard, that the building scales down uh, towards the back, the back side, you know, the backyard side, the southern side of the building. There's more glass and and wood, you know, materials that are really nice to to be next to. You know, maybe even we find, you know, we bring into the some of those spaces also either the lobby or the um, or the community center. So that's definitely so that's definitely the strategy that we're looking at too. Is that it? It, it definitely has a different presence um, on the street, more formal on the street, more um, informal uh, towards the backyard. Yeah. Um, Ruth, you must have, what do you think? Um, I, I liked a lot of the designs. I, I like the idea of maybe doing the wood around the back, but yes, matching in with the brick on the front. I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of wanting to see probably a little bit more and see some of the textures and some of the materials alongside the images of the 1910s. So, so if that's, you know, so when we're tying it in with that, so I can see. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, Bob, spring it. You know, you usually have an opinion. What do you think? I'm in Ruth's camp. Um, I, I, um, I think you really want to be, you really want to be careful. So for me, you really want to be careful with the overall design and make sure that that's appealing to the residents. And um, and so trying to, to me, it's sort of the copy to the horse. And um, so I'd like to see sort of the initial design options actually, so it's something physical. And then I think looking at um, the materials would be second. Um, I sort of echo um, the views of a couple of people. Um, I. There was one sh one of the one of the photos that you showed was a brick building with wood um, uh, as contrast that I thought was an interesting idea, depending on how it's used. Um, I'm not sure we had great luck with copper. I thought the middle school had a had a copper uh, band around the middle, and it tended to get really hot, um, and I think it led to um, tr you know problems trying to keep the building cool. So I think you needed to, uh, that was anecdotal. So I'm not sure if that's true, but that's what I've heard. So um, to me, the most important thing is how well um, the design fits the town center. Now there's the protective agencies building has not been a winner. The uh, Charles River School has not been a winner. Um, you know, so I think it was Barry, I'm not, no, I think it was Barry who said that we're really looking to tie this. I mean, I think the community is, is looking to tie this together in a nice package. And so the library, the townhouse, and the community center will, will sort of you know, play off each other. Uh, that probably helps not at all. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Does that help you, uh, you all? That's great. Yeah, that's Yes, great. it is. I mean, this isn't the last time we're going to be looking at uh, making this decision. Oh, no, no. <laughs> No, this is this is sort of like day one. <laughs> yeah, this is like we come along with the architect. You know, the you know we start thinking about the texture. You know, the material you use does inform how you approach the volume of the buildings. You know, we sort of work with you know sort of iterate through these these sorts of things, and we thought it would be good to show you, um, you know, it, it, sort of where we are with this iteration. You know, where we've collected a lot of mm -hmm. images and inspiration and things that we feel um, could make sense uh, in this context. And we don't have a lot of metal, um, Bob, to that point as, you know, we, there, the roofs we, you know, one of the roofs you'll see we are considering, um, but, you know, we were, uh, you know, looking at the palette that we ended up with, you know, it is definitely more towards the warmer materials. Yeah, so. I can, I can just add to what Bob was talking about in the middle school because I'm responsible for it to, to a degree. <laughs> Um, the copper was uh, done mainly because it was less expensive than brick <coughs> at the time. And the um, and believe it or not, the Globe said, oh, no, you're wrong. And we had to show them the, uh, <laughs> the you know, how much it actually costs. But uh, that's why it was picked. And um, 
I, did, I was not aware that it had an effect on the, the heat in the building, but I think it turned out pretty well. <coughs> right. Did you, did you um, pre-patina it? So did you use it as the, the bright green color or did you? Well, when it went on, it wasn't bright green. It wasn't green at all. It was uh, gold or whatever. And then yeah. it changed and it aged. And I think it's, yeah. it, it's aged well aesthetically from the outside. It may not, everybody that might not like it, but the real reason we did it, it was a cost figure at the time. Yeah. And I experienced that too, Ford, at one point, you know, and people thought we were crazy and they, you know, everyone, every time you bring copper to a construction site, it gets stolen. And, you know, and, but it ended up being the cheapest material. It was the one that the, you know, the client wanted and um, it ended up winning the day. Yeah. And, and it weathered, you know, maybe 10 years in it um, weathered to green. And it lasts. I mean, it's, it's very durable. It's beautiful material. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. So we'll you want to see it. some initial, our initial thinking. So we're going to start off with the renovation and show you two general strategies. I think the first one, we actually have a couple of iterations of it. So John, so this is, yeah. um, so this is the, um, uh, one of the renovations. So that means we are keeping the 1910 building, which you can see sort of in the, the background on this. If we look at the larger image. Yeah, exactly. Townhouse is um, on the right side across the street. And you can see some of the, you know, see the immediate neighbor also. Um, so this again is our cardboard model. Uh, and um, so it's looking at the volume of it. It's looking at um, you know the scale of it in relationship to other buildings. Um, and so this, this one is um, so the the one of the things one of the opportunities we see with the plan that has developed with the um, 1910 scheme. And maybe we should have had plans on this. The yeah. the major space it, it isolates the community room, and the community room has nothing on top of it. So as compared with the two story, which has this, you know, has a space on top of it. This one can take advantage of any kind of pitched roof. So we've done that with this. And we're, and the thought on, on um, a couple, both of these, the alternatives that you'll see is we treat it like a pavilion. So it's like this, its own little discrete um, building, almost like, you know, in the garden, you would maybe put, have the landscape a little different in it. It is, smaller than the school building, um, but it is um, uh, trying to, you know, have a scale on Springdale that is comparable to it. And then it scales down as it, as it slopes to the backyard to the south. Um, if we look at the, um, the backyard view, you can see, you know, again, the, the uh, so the community room, so that is the community room. It's very glassy as we uh, face the south side. So it would open um, directly into the activity spaces. You know, the entry is to the left of that and then you can see the, the gym. Um, we were thinking the gym in, in this alternative that we would, um, uh, that we would plant, uh, we could uh, plant a green wall on the lower part of the gym and have sort of panels of green, um, you know, the, uh, the mesh that um, you can grow um, green uh, vines on basically and, and make it a green, you know, make it literally a, a green wall. But in a way that's safe, safe for the brick. Um, so uh, that's the strategy for this. And then we tried uh, a version of the slope pavilion, um, which rotated that pavilion so that it's now uh, with its high face towards, um, towards Center Street. And um, you know, so it is um, as it meets the existing building, it's it's lower in scale, so it really separates a little more from uh, from the um, 1910 section of the building, and uh, has its highest face facing Springdale. So it's what's interesting about this one is it it almost has two faces. It has the Springdale face, which is the existing building, and um, the um, Center Street face, you know, which is the addition, and then you enter in. From the Springdale side between the two, and then it's similar, similar um, sort of uh, posture as you look at um, the view from the backyard. Could you go back to the other one just for a second? Yeah, sure. I just want to. I'm sort of comparing them in my own brain. <laughs> so yeah, that, um, I then go back. Uh, 
And in both of these, the uh, we're, that roof is really associated with the community room. It is the community room roof. Yeah. So the stage is at the higher part. Right. And, and that, that roof slope, that ceiling slope, when you're inside, will be going up to kind of accent the stage. Exactly. So, so David, this is the, one of the strategies that would be mm -hmm. able to have, um, you know, to take advantage of the volume number one and to maybe have some um, special finish in the, in the structure of it. You know, so the decking, we, we, you know, again, um, that was the strategy that we're thinking of. I, I, I guess my first is, is the element is, is very solid which I'm not sure programmatically it really needs to be. Why isn't, uh, I always uh, imagine that as being a very classy type of light structure. Mm -hmm. Well, we have, we, we could make this glassier um, and we have an alternative, and one more alternative for the demo. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering, <laughs> are you looking just yeah. for massing comparisons and No, and no, no, but I think, that's, or... I think that's a good point. I think this is not as natural uh, a form as our as our next one for having glass around that space. Now, if you look at the, but if you look at the um, the backyard view, John, if you can highlight where the glass is. So yeah. there's a lower yeah, section. Yeah, it tell. sort of steps down. Yeah, and that yeah. so it so from the south it would be very glassy, and then the other walls, especially the back to the stage. We've you know these schemes we were thinking about where you would have the stage, and it could be on the short side or the long side. Um, in the, th this case, it would be on the long on the long side. Ruth, where's the exit going from the community room out? Do you have to go out through the entrance, or is it going to be a, a, a access from the community room, or do you know the glassy area? Isn't it? Yeah, we were we were thinking that you might want to be able to open um, up that space to the outside, and maybe there's a patio right outside it. Maybe you know mm -hmm. a stone. <laughs> stone yeah. um, patio yeah, think, yeah with oh. with a low wall that you know sort of um defines it and maybe provides a little bit of security you know for the for that patio space i mean i would hope there will be a patio because that's what yeah. we're telling people so i hope it's <laughs> a patio or something okay. deck or something but yes. i think to be able to flow out so you have an event mm -hmm. in that community room that could flow outside mm -hmm. that could be quite lovely Exactly. And that's the that's the strategy for, for this one. Deborah, just to double check, when you're uh -huh. looking at the backyard view, it's that that bit at the the window to the right of the entrance, that's the kitchen. Yeah. That would be the that's, cafe. Yeah. Sorry, the cafe. Yes. Yeah. And then and then the rest of it is all the community room. So the ceiling yeah. would change and get mm -hmm. lower as you got to the windows. Exactly. Okay. Just a little bit for a zone. Yes. And that one has the cafe. So that whole face has, is activated by com the community room and the, and the cafe. Okay, cool. Possible to make the um, pavilion more complementary to the 1910? Well, maybe we should look at the Sorry. next alternative. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> So here we have um, the monitor roof uh, pavilion. This is the one that the strategy that's inspired by um, the library. Uh, and uh, it has, um, it's a little bit, uh, you can see it's, it's got a longer slope as it gets closer to the, um, to the main building. So it's, it's sort of pulled away as much as possible. It's trying, it's, it's trying to not mimic, but rather be sort of deferential to the, um, to the um, school, but it, you know, has a very simple form. This one really, I think reads like a pavilion even stronger because of the, the hip roof we have here. The thought on this one is that it would, that there would be a monitor at the top and light coming from above in this one. The other one had clear story, you know, sort of light high along the wall. This one has it actually in the roof. And again, I think of, you know, of, of, you know, ceiling that, you know, the ceiling could be the decking of the ceiling could be wood for this one, you know, and it really takes advantage of the form of the pavilion. And you can see we have an interior view of another project. But um, you know, it's sort of similar in, in concept. So I think it's a slightly larger scale, but it's similar in concept to 
what we're trying to achieve with this one. Not that I didn't like the one before, but as soon as I saw this, I kind of felt like it was, in my, in my mind personally, it felt more Dover. Yeah, to me, yeah. it's, oh, wow, I, I, I think it's, um, I, I think it fits beautifully. And if you think of the other buildings that we're keying ourselves in on, um, I don't know. And this somebody says, the, Ford, you don't pick paint, and you don't design this, and you don't do that. But I do like this look. Yeah. We, and I think this one, the north side, the Springdale side, at the pavilion could be very glassy, David. So to your, to your question. Yeah. So that it really reads a little more like a pavilion. You know, this mm -hmm. one could almost feel like it's got four really heavy legs holding up that roof. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and be glassy or panel, you know, or, or like a panel set in so that it, it reads, um, it, it reads like it's supporting that roof and the roof would be very yeah. present. And this one we were thinking might be, might be a metal roof, you know, to make, again, to make it distinct, but um, compatible with um, the school, the school building. Yeah, depends if Ford could get us a good price on copper. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, those days are gone. I hope you save some of that, <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, and I like the, the back of it. I think that flow with the you know the way you have the windows there and then the slope. I, I think I think for a neighbor like Dave Billings, he might like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also wanted to say and meant to say on the last one, I love the idea of the green wall. I think I think that would be so lovely to mm -hmm. in keep with the um, with the rest of Dover and the green spaces, and also yeah. for the butters, that it's not all full on brick that they're looking mm -hmm. at. Exactly, well, and that's, that's say, great that a, Is that a colored green wall, or is it an no. ivy? Well, it's, it's just going to be a trellis. Yes, exactly. yeah, with ivy on it or something. Yeah, exactly. Some, yeah. But I, I think the way that I'm looking? viewing it, Deborah, is that I've seen these in architecture in in houses in London actually more, where they put them into a small space. It's almost like a greenhouse type effect and it fills the whole wall and it's plants that are put in there rather than necessarily just things growing up is that right it's a living wall yeah it can be it could be either one I know and we don't see those as much in this country but I know in Europe you know I can visualize they're, a number of places where yeah where there are green walls that are, one of the as science. you just yeah as you describe it where it's um where there's different plants that are grown mm. into it I I think um, that might be a more expensive um, scenario, you know, higher maintenance, more expensive. But... Okay, I need to be quiet then. <laughs> <laughs> but we could certainly look at it. Now I'm really putting a green wall inside too. <laughs> when, I, when I think of, I'm calling it ivy, whether it's ivy or not, but it, it tends to dig into brick and it tends to dig into wood and all that. So it, it is a maintenance issue, isn't it? That's why, that's why the idea is that you put it in, there's actually, um, it's like a, a, a wire cage that sits mm -hmm. in front of the wall. And it actually, you know, it, and you select vines um, uh, that twining vines, you know, that climb up that, you know, so they're not digging into the brick. I know because I've lived in that kind of building in Cambridge, you know, and they're, they really do destroy walls and they leave their little suckers all over the wall too. Um, no, the idea, you know, we could um, plant this with something that is not attached, literally attached to the wall. Okay. All right. Committee, anything else on this or? Yeah, I, I had a little bit of trouble with the curb up on the top of the roof. I, it, to me, it, it's a bit dated. Um, oh, you're talking I mean, about the, the monitor the piece? Monitor? The monitor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> and also, well, I'd like to see if there's a more elegant or, or, or streamlined way of, of doing it. Yeah, we were trying to do something actually. So this is definitely inspired by the library, you know, with the, the hip that comes to the chimney. You know, it's like, yeah, the, chimney know, got, like the chimney got chopped off. And, yeah, and but, we can, but those chimneys always looked very, you know, Disney-esque to me. And yeah. do you have a heat issue with that, uh, heating the room? I mean, you in the summer the I know it's air conditioned but the sun's beating down on it we will manage the sun is that that's the beauty that's the beauty of south exposure is that you can have just simply overhangs or you know a few yeah, yeah a horizontal um, 
uh, screen, you know, screen that has some horizontal to it that keeps the sunlight out during the summer oh. when you don't want the heat gain. And uh, it can let a little more in onto the floor in the winter where, where the heat gain is actually um, precious. So, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah. And then the north side, you, you wouldn't need to worry about. And I, I think it could be with this um, alternative also, um, the pavilion, just two more things I wanted to point out is that it is not out as close to Springdale as the school is. It's set back just because of where it mm -hmm. needs to connect into the existing building or behind the existing building south of, you know, so there is some space on the Springdale side. And we were thinking that that could be a great um, extension to the um, cafe, a place, you know, so another place that people could go and sit and or a place um, that connected to the COA area, you know, so that, you know, the COA could come freely in and out. So we were thinking of activating this to some extent with um, either, you know, um, places for people to sit or, or something else, or even be able to open it out in that direction also. Yeah, I, I like the idea. We've mentioned it today when we had our meeting um, with the tea and chat is, you know, being able to walk out, to be outside in the nice weather and having some nice chairs back there. And that's where mm -hmm. instead of sitting in the cafe or, or somebody, mm -hmm. you'd be sitting outside, maybe on, yeah. on the bench or something and mm -hmm. being able to chat or even have a, you know, I'll meet you for a sandwich and people bring a sandwich. And um, I, I think that would be very attractive. Yeah. Lots of different places for people to sit, like stone wall, you know, almost like seats that are made out of stone walls or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you do something to uh, de-emphasize the roof a little more on the pavilion? Uh, when I look at the present 1971 building, it, all I think about is the roof. <laughs> oh. And I was wondering if you could soften this roof or de-emphasize it a little. <laughs> Well, again, um, Barry, we were thinking of it um, sort of like the library, you know, which is, um, you know, so, uh, which is, a, I think, a very positive thing. Um, so we were, so we thought the roof is actually a feature. Uh, you know, it gets a little, if we, if we just have the, a flat roof here, it's very diminutive, this, right. um, this piece. So we thought that that, that would, you know, be a feature um, to the building. I mean, maybe the material of it, you know, de-emphasizes it a little bit, you yeah. know, color-wise. Because when you look at, when you have sight lines of the uh, townhouse, you really almost never see the roof. Mm -hmm. You have to be very far away from the roof. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this, um, the sight lines are uh, from 50 or 100 feet away or at roof, almost at roof mm -hmm. level. Um, yeah. And those are good considerations, Barrett. The 1971 is is asphalt shingle, isn't it? So I mean, also the material of that roof is part of its lack of success. Right. Of course, the townhouse you can't you don't pay attention to the roof, but it's what is a slate roof? It's yeah, right. right. <laughs> Largest roof. Yeah. Need some repair, but it's a very nice roof. Yeah. yeah. Again. Yeah. Again, the in the inspiration was um, the library. And, um, you know, so I think um, actually we'll take a closer look at the library. I can't remember that one has a shingle. I think a yeah, shingle it's, it's with shingles. Yeah, it's really beautiful. So, so that's, a softer, yeah. that's a softer uh, type look. Yeah, and I think we're similar in pitch, but um, we could we can uh, take a look at that. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I that really appealed to me about this particular design is that one of the things I mentioned earlier was using this, this facility to sort of pull the three primary, uh, the, this would be one of the primary town buildings, pull it together. And I, when, it, when, when you uh, move to this slide, um, it was just instant appeal. Um, and because I thought, thought, wow, that's pretty interesting because that's one way of pulling the different Buildings together. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, people have been obviously everybody has their own you know, sort of price, but I feel like if one of your objectives was to create something that pulled the different architectural elements together, this was certainly a pretty good first shot. 
Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. So the other, so the other benefit I wanted to point out, out on this one is you see that roof, and, it, and I guess if you don't like the roof, then maybe that's a negative. Um, from the from the backyard side, you know, so you know it's a building that sort of scaled for mm -hmm. that side. Again, like the library, you know, which it feels like a, such a beautifully scaled building. I mean, maybe this needs to obviously need some refinement, but. Um, you know, I think if we can achieve something has, you know, as nice a scale as a library, that would be an achievement. But I do, I do think it's sort of, it's sort of cool that you do see it on the, uh, on the backyard side also. All right. All right. Should we go on to the new construction? Sure. Mm -hmm. So we have two alternatives for this. Uh, and this is, um, the first one we find, so, you know, these are, we've done a lot of, of um, alternatives getting, getting to this point. And one of the challenges we found with the two story was, um, it, you know, initially we had a very simple volume to it. And it was, um, it was sort of, it felt overscaled for the kind of building that it is. It, we felt like it needed to, it felt like a, um, a, an approachable building. So, um, here, this the the scheme that we're showing here sort of has layers to it. You know, as you go from the Springdale side um, to the uh, to the backyard side, where it's um, larger scale. Um, you know, the the roof slopes up towards that that side to give it to make it closer to the height of the wall of the the school. Um, and uh, this is again, we uh, in some locations we feel like we would take advantage of that slope roof because of the nature of the spaces that are in it. Um, for instance, we look at the Northeast corner, um, the, the top right image, the far right corner of it. Um, you can see we have higher windows. We were thinking that's the, that's the fitness, um, I call it the movement studio, the dance studio. And that is a space that, you know, cause this is North light could um, have higher windows and uh, take advantage and, and have a, um, a slope ceiling to give it more volume. So, you know, the more volume you can have in a in a movement space, you know, I think it's a more comfortable space um, to do that activity in. Um, and so this one, some of these spaces could actually open up to the roof and and um, have uh, you know and take advantage of the volume that's created. And then if we look at the um, the backyard side, the backyard view. You can see that there's um, a lot of glazing. Um, we have the, yeah, John's outlining the um, community, the community room, and then above it um, is an outdoor deck, and um, behind it the um, COA, and um, on one side and then next to it is the flex, the flex space. So that would have the divisible room um, next to it, all taking advantage of that south exposure and. The view towards the um, uh, the open space, you know, behind the building, the activities happening there. So, talk about light, and, and I'm thinking of you, Janet. There's plenty of light in there. Janet, you might want to have a comment about that space if, if you'd like to. Um, interesting. Okay. There's and also a, a, a balcony, right? Where you want to just... Exactly, yeah. Uh, not a usable balcony, or is it going to be usable? Okay. It could be. It could be usable. So, if you wanted to, in the future, you could put a railing around there, and that could be a seating area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or in the, or from the gecko, it could be a, a yeah. seating a seating area. And so if it's not all door going out to it, absolutely, yeah. So if you, um, so you could have a door from the COA out onto that, and then the area outside the flex space could be also deck, or it could be it could be green roof. Also, it's a small area, and that could be a nice, um, you know, uh, treatment of that that um, portion of the roof. And if you had, because, a, depending on the railing, it mm -hmm. would be it'd break it up a little bit in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then this um, this one has a sort of a canopy along the whole face, the south face, 
uh, including at the um, yeah exactly and it could turn into a trellis as it as it you know came in front of the um, uh, the the uh, rec space you know and then have have vines growing on the trellis. Now I'm thinking in the back we're facing neighbors and there's a could be a lot of light coming out of there now. From the second floor for the COA spot, there wouldn't be a lot of light because they wouldn't be working. Downstairs, you know, that's the other issue, but you can solve that with curtains and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And depending on how dense the planting is between yep. neighbors, yeah. Um, that <laughs> might, it's, it's set back, you know, it's pretty far off of the, um, off of the rear line. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think we'll want shades in the community room in all these options. Yes. Both, if not for nighttime, for daytime. Yeah. You know, depending on the activity that's occurring, you may need to shade it. When I look at the front of the building, I am looking at it from the northeast corner. Mm -hmm. It looks like just sort of, a, you know, I, I suppose you can, it's sort of like a rectangular office building. I didn't mean to insult anybody, but <laughs> I'm just thinking, you know, it's, but maybe that can be, it isn't all the same level. I can see that. Yeah. And it's, and here um, in the darker areas, um, those are the alternate material. So yep, yep, it's yep. like brick frame, you know, and it's, and it's somewhat playful also. And as I was describing, like at the, at the fitness studio, you know, it could have higher windows, you know, taking advantage of the volume and also at the main entry on um, the same same thing so um fitness studio has very large windows which is a nice asset yeah well i'm gonna echo ford my first impression was not flattery <laughs> but now i'm just bob it's, it's looking boring. better the more i see it so <laughs> i don't know did you clean your glasses i mean what happened <laughs> All right. Okay, we have one more. We have one more, yeah. So we have a all flat roof. So this is a flat roof scheme, This the next one. And was developed to, um, you know, to allow for a flat, you know, you can see it's a, it scales down a bit compared mm -hmm. with the last one. If we, these were registered together, you could see that um, you know, it's a lower volume, um, that very front piece. So again, we're trying to break up the scale of the building using, um, by, by having sort of layers to it. That, that um, entry, um, the high piece there captures the elevator override. So that elevator is at the face of the building and, yeah. and it's gonna be a taller element. And so we feel like, you know, it, it is um, creating an interesting volume um, that, you know, makes the, Sort of a gesture towards the entry, um, which is which is right next to it, and again, there's a lot of um, a lot of this surface. It's very playful in terms of brick and and alternate and an alternate material or two, um, as you know, with, the, with um, again on the Springdale side, it's predominantly brick, and then as we move around um, to the to the backyard view, it, it's predominantly. Um, that wood or that um, warm um, scale, you know, um, scale down um, uh, material. Committee and again, and, and again, um, the opportunities of, of, um, of daylight, you know, on the south side, you yeah. know, the windows were take, take again, having a lot of the windows on the on the south side and the ability to have a deck um, at, from outside COA um, or the flex space and or. Could you go back to the other one for a minute? Mm -hmm. Please. Okay. I like that deck on the second floor. I think they both have them, don't they? They do. Yeah, they, 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 they do. Both have them. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to see the trying to get a comparison of it. I, I um, yeah. Um, so yeah, because that deck becomes on the right side. You've got kind of a 
a a rising parapet. Is that is that creating yes. the angle? Yep. Right, starting okay. at the elevator, overrun, mm -hmm. and okay. just kind of. Uh, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just trying to understand. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to kind of replicate something on the left hand side. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> couldn't, I, couldn't we have, just playing. Yeah, with it. we wanted to. We, yeah. yeah, we wanted to. Um, so this is a scheme that um, is going to be, dare I say it, maybe more affordable. <laughs> Than the one before, <laughs> and and we made yes. thinking that way. Dare I say that? Too. Yeah. So we and we of course we we wanted to have an alternative that is um you know is is uh you know taking that as as um a a driver of the alternative. It and sort of so, takes away it takes away from the look of the other one that you know was sort of rectangular. I think I think it's it's mm -hmm. I think. Cam, you have your hand up. Has that been up the whole time, or have I just? No, I just raised it, uh, for what I didn't want to interfere. Um, but I think my impression of these, the the two new alternatives, are that they don't really seriously try to pay any um, respect to the broader town the way uh, the second renovation model does, and I I find that a little unfortunate. I don't see the sort of references to other sorts of structures in the town that might pull it together in the way that that that, that um, second one did. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was just my thought. Mm -hmm. Is that because, you know, I'm thinking, is that because of the, the roof, slope roof on the other one as compared to this one? Does that have anything to do with what Cam just said? Well, there was more traditional form with the mm -hmm. slope roofs, but um, having a modern structure kind of talks to this time as opposed to something that's you know, you know, trying trying to emulate a historic structure. Yeah, yeah, and and we um, that's a, always a hard thing to do, mm -hmm. um, and to have it have it feel meaningful and not trite. I mean, I feel like. So I feel like the night, the 71 section of the building was trying to do that, you know, so like maybe trying to trying to emulate the library in a funny way. And it's the scale of it, you know, so it's really hard to put, you know, pitched roofs on buildings of this scale yeah. uh, and mm -hmm. affordably, number one and number two, you know, that don't start to just, um, uh, they, they um, just are hard to you know, bring into this, you know, to this period of time and, mm -hmm. and uh, be, feel meaningful. And yeah, and, and we, and I don't, I mean, I don't know if we fully abandoned um, photovoltaics, but this, this um, alternative is one that um, provides a good platform for the photovoltaics. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah, where the other one really doesn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the slope proof really down. Um, yeah. Yeah, all of those uh, points uh, make sense to me as well, so. Yeah. I just uh, was a little um, surprised that the, <laughs> that they that it was so different. Yeah, well, it feels it, it's the opportunity of having that, you know, the original building, which um, you know pr provides. It's a different, so it's a completely different kind of architectural um, mm -hmm. uh, challenge mm -hmm. than than you know uh, start you know clear the site and start start afresh. Yeah, it's sort of in the eyes of the beholder. This is a little yeah. bit more modern uh, than the other one. And, uh, yeah. you know, that's maybe appeal to a large group of people and the other one may too. So I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I mean, I think it. this one really puts a lot of uh, emphasis it, uh, on how we treat the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, how beautifully that is, how well scaled it is, how um, textural, how dynamic it is, as light changes on it, you know, so it's, it's a different kind of, of challenge, but I think that is, you know, what we would in, embrace for this. And I mean, this is the scheme. I think does translate nicely as it goes to the to the backyard. You can see that mostly that darker material. So, you know, which you know the alternate material. Um, so, you know, it's it's sort of interesting in that way. I guess it doesn't make it more like any of the other buildings on the you know in the town center, but. You know, maybe yeah. just trying to do one that scaled similarly and has, you know, it's sort of well, a... It offers in, more light. 
I think, into the building, which is what we we learned in our last go around. So, right, more light in the building. So, so to me, guys, this looks a lot like Charles River, and Charles River didn't get a, a very warm reception by the citizens of Dover. <laughs> and I'm sort of in Cam's camp that, um, you know, if I were to choose just on on sort of curb appeal, this this is jarring to me for the town center. So what, um, so um, I don't disagree with you about the Charles River School, but I'm curious what um, you feel are the reasons that make it uh, alien to um, the town center? I mean, I, well, I mean, if you, if, you, if you think about the renovation option, that sort of fits very nicely in with the committee. It fits very nicely into the town center and you're introducing something that feels way more modern than, um, than um, the rest of the town center. And that's what happened with the Charles River School. Mm -hmm. um, the Charles River School, you know, I mean, people just were beside themselves because how different that building looked to, um, to their eye. Um, and I just see this the same way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what you can do. Um, I was certainly not expecting something um, in new that was Again, um, tended to modern, sort of a modern look. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all, you know, sort of the eyes of the beholder stuff. I think Philippe said that. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly true. Mm -hmm. Ford may have said that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's um, materially very distinct from, you know, everything else. In the Charles Tennessee. River is. Charles right. River. And yeah, we, I mean, that's the know, one thing. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, say it. That, I was probably going to say the same thing. <laughs> is is formally in terms of mass and shape, this is certainly very modern. But the, uh, the idea for this one would definitely be that it's a it's a nice red brick that really relates well to townhouse, and so the materiality is what is about town center. Because I I see Charles River is as being off in two directions. Its shape is very industrial stripped down and its material is also yeah. very different. So when you differ on both those axes, then you're really quite different. Yeah, remember Charles River is talking to the campus. It's it's yeah. relating to the other buildings on the campus. Uh, that's where the designers were going. And although, you know, the scale is still relatively res residential, which still works for the town center. Um, and the one comment I have is, is that you have a lot of verticality in the elements and that maybe if you introduced some horizontality that helped break it down a little bit more, it would, you, you might be able to put some more classical language in there that would speak to the townhouse, which is really what you're trying to relate to. It's, you really don't see the library from it. I, I understand it's relating it, but you're really addressing the townhouse and its proportions and, and elements. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that may help you be able to still keep a very modernistic language or contemporary forms and s still relate. I mean, it, it's, it's more of a challenge, obviously. You got a historic building, you can kind of work off that. It's, it's an easier, um, design element to, to, re, to get resolution on. Um, this is, you know, this is, I find a lot more of, a, a lot more interest and I think speaks to, you know, uh, who we are now and, and, and the future as opposed to the past. And I, I think that's important for, for a town to do. Yeah, and I think what Ford was saying um, earlier uh, maybe I'll say it slightly differently than Ford did, is it is um, our intent was to have a more formal um, uh, face towards uh, Springdale, mm -hmm. towards the town center, and have something, you know, but yet approachable, you know, something that just felt, you know, materially very warm, you know, as we develop this, you know, canopies and, and activating, you know, creating some outdoor spaces and all that, you know, I think are, are you know, that are related to the to the building form, I think are really important. And then it breaks down and, um, you know, is, is uh, more um, 
oh, it, almost, I don't wanna say residential, but it's scaled down as you get towards the backyard where there's a lot of activity happening and, you know, and the green space and, and uh, the natural light and all that. So, you know, it's, it's sort of like, it's got these two very different faces. Mm -hmm. Which I think is appropriate once talking to the main street and once talking to a more residential scale. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, and, and the other thing as I was thinking is you could break up that front you know, depending on materials, how you use them, you could break mm -hmm. it up. It, it'll soft. It'll, I think, lower the building. In looks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you break up the facade and make it and pick up some of the characteristics of the townhouse? Um. So we're hoping that the scale. Um. So, not it. Not um. To replicate sort of the. The kinds of details that they have, dentals and you know various things, yeah. but rather to to um, take um, cues from the scale of the building, and you know, and we're we're thinking of doing that through the patterning of the brick and panelizing of the brick, you know, whether it's literally panelized, Teresa, or or, or just um, visually panelized, as as the existing school is, you know, it's, it's again taking cues from them, but not replicating them, uh, and. Um, you know, so hopefully it will feel scaled, um, maybe not qu quite as scaled up as the townhouse. I think the um, idea of making sure that it is, um, you know, I, again, I think the townhouse is a little more monumental of a building functionally, um, but to, um, you know, relate to it in, in ways um, that, you know, that humans do relate to buildings. Yeah, it's a little hard to kind of get that sense and these renderings. It's why chipboard <laughs> models really work very nicely. Yes. Yeah. Many of you are doing them because um, then you can really see, touch, and feel yeah. the scale of it. Uh, yeah. But you know, it's it's not that big a building, and it's right. And yeah. Trying to convey that it's mm -hmm. it's actually a, uh, um, you know, a, a very human scaled. Uh, mm -hmm. The you know, for a public building, it it's uh, pretty approachable. Okay. Where do you want to go with this, Deborah? I think you guys have given us great, great feedback. All right, so well, I think we're going to push, you know, so I, I do feel like there was a really strong preference for, a, for the demo scheme. Um, you know, and maybe at some point we're going to hopefully end up with a, one demo scheme, a demolition scheme, you know, which is saving the 1910, I should say. Right. And one of the um, uh, the two story, and you know I feel like um, a lot of people seem to uh, like the um, the uh, which what I, what, I can't the monitor the monitor pitch mm. the monitor roof um, pavilion concept. Um, so I'm wondering, John, I'm I'm wondering if it makes sense to uh, for that one to just focus on that one and then keep these two alive um, for a little while longer. Well, I think we'll definitely focus more effort on that one than the other, but I'd like to develop all four of these based on mm -hmm. this feedback um, a little more. Uh, and then I guess we can talk about how you wanna make a selection, but yes, obviously we need to quickly yeah. okay. choose a Thank single re reno and a, and a single new construction. <laughs> Right. Um, for the purpose of our cost estimating set. But I think it'd be helpful if we develop these a little bit more, uh, try to incorporate some of this feedback. And, and ultimately our goal though will be just like with new versus reno is, is, is to provide you at least two choices, two kind of different directions um, for each and, and then, and then let, let you all decide what, what your preference is. Yeah, I, I think that I think that makes sense, and we have to do that okay. fairly quickly. But I think, yeah, I think that makes sense, and I think also maybe when you're ready to get to that stage, um, it might be worth advertising this so we could have a little bit of citizen input um, also, uh, and, and um, I think that might be worthwhile. worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, and all that can be done very quickly. I mean, we can we can tell a form that we're going to be looking at this kind of thing, and I think we'd get a number of people. It'd be just interesting to, you know, for an hour, let them tell us what they think, and that'll be helpful too. Yeah, I think we'll also be having conversation with our cost estimator about some of these materials, get a sense of, you know, whether some of the alternate materials are more expensive or less expensive than, than brick, um, you know, so we can start to, um, you know, hone in on something also that's uh, not going to need a lot of, um, uh, a lot of changes um, once we get into the cost estimating mode. That, that's imperative because yeah. it has to be affordable and that means it has to, has to be in budget, whatever we do. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, when you're combining brick with other materials, remember you're dealing with filed subbids. So you got right. different mm -hmm. groups and different schedules. And oh, it, yes. <laughs> it's, it's hard to get the playfulness and the interaction of different materials when you have that separation of labor. Um, mm. it, it's, it's, it can be done, it's, it's just hard. Yeah. And we've got masonry. We've got the and, masonry subbid. <laughs> and you mentioned lead, lead time too, Dave. So that, that also factors into oh, that. Yeah. So, oh, yeah you, gotta, you know, take them all into, into account. So again, uh, you know, we come back to you guys in terms of the schedule and you tell us what makes sense and we, we, will, try, we will accommodate. Mm. All right. Well, I mean, we can have, you know, we could have two meetings in one week and one of them could be just this focus for an hour. So that, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's all we had. So thank you. That's all you had, John? <laughs> all right. Let's, um, committee, anything else on this? Or is what I said, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. No, I think it's a good start. It's very interesting. All right, um, going on to our agenda, um, I had the opportunity to meet with the selectmen last week, I think. Um, talked about town meeting, uh, talked about a June 5 or 12 town meeting. Um, the selectmen um, and Chris Willie will be talking about that, trying to figure out what makes the most sense. Um, for us, and that would be an outside Saturday town meeting in the football field. Well, uh, at least that's the current plan. I, I think we're focusing on the 12th at this point. Okay. So um, that's that we took place with that meeting. Um, and our attorney is working on a, on a, uh, a motion, uh, not a motion, a warrant articles that might make sense. And when she's done that and the selectmen and Chris have come to some kind of opinion, we'll bring that to you also. Um, but I think what they're talking about makes a lot of sense in terms of getting the town input in the vote. Um, storage update, um, I've made a presentation to the selectmen uh, on the storage, uh, storage issue, how we could use a thousand, 2000 square feet of uh, storage over whiting and that would be appreciated. Um, and uh, they have that information and I believe that they're going to be uh, looking to talk to a consultant about uh, what may need to be done to that building. So that's a work in progress and um, hopefully within a week or two we'll know where that's going. Um, I would say that's optimistic but it's okay. <laughs> I'm always optimistic. <laughs> That's not my problem. <laughs> um, Ruth, you want to talk a little bit about um, the communications update that you planned? We sent that, your, your draft to everybody and, and uh, talk to them maybe about immediate plans and how we're progressing. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and keep it brief because you've got the information. So we're focusing at the moment on community catch-ups whereby we're reaching out to local groups. Um, to see if they're interested in meeting with us on Zoom with a specific focus on their group and what needs the community centre will meet for them. So we met with the COA and seniors this afternoon. Um, we have one plan for the theatre groups in town, which includes the school drama groups, 
um, both middle school and high school open fields and Dober foundation. And they're going to put that out to all their followers, all their parents, all their members. Um, also, um, I'm working with Mark Galoni um, and DMA and PTO to bring together one for sort of parks and recs, young parents. Um, other things we're going to try and do is um, between Ford and I, we're going to try and get to as many sort of community group board meetings as we can. Ford obviously attending the selectmen meetings. And I'll, I'll be continuing social media, MailChimp, group emails, next door patch, and I think that's it, and the hometown weeklies and everything. So anything that comes up, anything fun that we've got that we can post on that, any updates, I'll continue to do that. Um, Moving forward into the future, we're looking to do uh, to consider yard signs and a banner on the town green, although we just need to look at either a donation or one of or perhaps one of us funding that because um, we don't have a budget for any of this. And then the video, we'd like to do a video like we did last time, which we interviewed people in the community about what they thought about the community centre and why they were interested in this project. And we'd love to do that again at some point um, and put that out on social media. So short little sections or one long big section that we can post on the town website. So those are the sort of things that we're thinking of right now. If you do have any other ideas, if you think of any groups that might be interested, I mean, basically what I've done is put out on, in the Hometown Weekly this week and on social media and in the updates that if people can't make some of these meetings that are already planned, they just have to reach out to us or if they've got a group of neighbors that are interested you know some of us any of us will turn up and speak to them at these meetings and give them updates show them the plans in detail and talk them through it that's it yeah i think the the idea is is to communicate as much as possible between now and the 12th uh, if that's the date so my philosophy is um if we can get to town meeting it might be even a boring presentation because they've seen it before and um, we will be giving actually the whole town meeting presentation the week before uh, to citizens. So they'll walk into the meeting uh, and have a pretty good idea of, of what we've been doing and where we're going. Um, and I would hope to basically by the time we get to town meeting, we will have a recommendation also uh, to the town which one um, we prefer. Um, the meeting today, just so you know, um, the tea and chat, I didn't see a lot of people with tea other than me and Bob had a, bo had a vodka martini. So that, that really didn't help. But um, it was, I think the meeting went very well. And, and where I came away with it, and I could be way off base, but where I came away with it is I think people began to understand what we've been doing and, and how we've been doing it. And I think I think, and why we made the decisions we have. And, and we also, I think they realized that the two plans we have are great assets. I mean, they have great potential and you know, it's not everything is perfect, um, but you know, that's sort of a give and take when you go through a process like this. So I walked away, granted that may be just who I am, but I was optimistic that, you know, I think, I think people understood after having come to the meeting, they understood more than they did when they went in. And I think uh, I think that was helpful. So that's uh, where we are with that. Um, I will, anything else that you all have to say? If not, uh, we'll go to citizen comments. Do we have any citizen comments? Soraya, you have to unmute yourself. I will unmute myself. Um, it's a meeting today also, and uh, the, the tea. And um, I was surprised at how few comments there were. But um, one of the comments that I made there, and this is a little bit off topic, was why um, can't we swap out the gym and the um, community room so that the gym has three sides of ability to expand if need be in the future. And the community room can take advantage of that much more Southern exposure, which is currently or in your plans being hogged by the um, gym, which doesn't really have any need for um, sunlight. And by doing that, you could sneak the um, 
Council on Aging in next to the front door, move the, um, the parks and recreation over to where the kitchen for the um, community room would be and put the kitchen where a lot of that gray storage space currently is on your save 1910 plan. So um, that's number one. Um, number two, um, you said a lot about the addition to the save 1910 and also the, um, the new buildings, uh, potential new structures being deferential to the original or to the existing town buildings. But what you showed in your list of examples were, in my opinion, not in the slightest bit deferential. They may have shared the same material, but they, they were just kind of like fingernails on a chalkboard next to what they were <laughs> supposed to be being deferential to. Um, and, and very unfriendly buildings. They may have been making a dramatic um, artistic statement, but they were not inviting, welcoming, um, or, or, or community inducing. They were the kind of buildings as are the, in my opinion, two new buildings that you showed us today, um, off-putting and not a place that you would want to, to go. Um, as far as um, Barry's comment um, that we should be trying to pull the existing um, architectural styles that are in the um, town center together rather than trying to add a new discordant um, architectural style um, I, I'm definitely for that, for trying to make it more cohesive rather than more fractured in the town center. And I don't think that just using brick is enough to make that cohesiveness happen because um, it, it just isn't. <laughs> um, in your initial, um, save 1910s, your, um, your community room mimics the public safety buildings, which we've all said were not a good idea from the get-go. So why would we go there again? That just seems like a, a very bad idea. Um, the, um, the second version of that pavilion, um, uh, motif of the um, save 1910 um, it would those sloped roofs be adequate for um, solar panels I don't know you somebody who's an expert please speak up maybe cam knows um, but I think we definitely need to keep that in the in our minds at least maybe not initially but five ten years down the road road because we're going to have to be more responsible about our energy usage. There's, there's no question about that. Um, would it be possible to just have a hipped roof um, instead of the monitor roof on the save 1910? That's the question I'm asking right now. Um, hoping to get an answer. Um, and you're talking about having a seating area outside the Springdale entrance of um, the community room if it continues to be there on the corner of um, Center Street and Springdale. But who is going to want to sit out there with two directions worth of backed up cars um, and on the north side of the building? Much more logical seating area would be in the backyard, so to speak. Um, so I don't think that should really be a big marketing um, ploy to sell those um, those um, iterations of your plans. Um, and once again, I will reiterate that the the new options just do not seem at all in keeping with the town and. Um, and I hope that we don't end up having those be the primary options. And with that, I will be quiet. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? Jane, do you have, 
You're on mute if you are going to make one. Gene, you're on mute. Still on mute. Okay, now you're okay. Okay, great. No, I, I'm, I'm with uh, Sierra on the, uh, the two new buildings. They look like office buildings that uh, would, uh, uh, you know, have a, a, a firm in them. Uh, they don't look inviting. And uh, uh, I, of the, the four versions, I think that the one that does justice to the library really does the best job of fitting in the town center. That's it. Thank you, Jane. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, our next meeting is on March 22nd, uh, which is a couple of days away. It's on Monday. Um, and um, if there's nothing else to come before, and that'll be at 6.30 also. Thank you for the time change. Um, and is there anything else to come before the meeting? If not, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Barry Goldman? Yay. Uh, Ruth Townsend? Yeah. Dave Billings? Yes. Ford Spaulding? Yes. Thank you all. We will see you Monday. It's not very far away. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.